you're never going to know what those chances were that you missed on. And, you know, one day we're all going to be laying down. And if we didn't take those chances, we're going to regret it. Hey, Dan, it's time for Behind Behind the the Buffer. Welcome to Behind the Buffer, a presentation of the Owner's Pride podcast. I'm your host, Dan Williams, Dan E. Williams, and yep, you know it, the E stands for Eco Wash, the drought tolerant, best eco friendly way to wash your car with just a little bit of water. Eco Wash the World. Use hashtag Eco Wash the World at checkout, and you're going to get 10% off of your order. It's just that simple. My goodness, Eco Wash the World. Today, I'm behind the buffer. I have my special guest, Mr. Josh Saunders from New Image Auto Spa in Statesville, North Carolina. How are you doing today, sir? Uh, Doing fabulous now that I'm one with you. How are you today? Man, I too am doing pretty darn fabulous, actually. Um, I think every day I get to like work with great detailers and business owners like yourself. And I, I I just feel that I am in the place that I'm supposed to be. It's a good world to be in. It really is. Yeah. But today we're going to turn the camera lens on to you and talk about your detail business journey. Yeah. So I like to hop into the Wayback Machine right out of the chute and ask you to tell me, share with us your first experience of ever washing, detailing, touching, whatever it was, cleaning a car. Yeah, that's real simple. So when I got out of high school, uh, I ended up at our, we have a very huge uh, auto auction here in Statesville, North Carolina. And in my early 20s, I got a job there, applied for a detailing job, and this is production. So uh, they brought me in. I probably spent eight to 10 years there, pretty much my whole 20s, uh, learned exterior buffing, paint correction, wet sanding, um, learned the exterior washing, interior cleanups, all on a production line. So the more we did, what we made. So that's where I got all my knowledge from in my training. Cause you know, you're cleaning cars for Chrysler, GM, uh, Nissan, all these big type dealerships that are selling their cars every Tuesday. So got all my training there. I uh, ended up doing a little body work, decal removals. And, uh, as I ventured off into management, retail and sales management and stuff like that, it was always my dream to, it just stuck with me. So okay. having my own place, I did it mobile for a while in my twenties, but well, you, you're just, just you're on a rocket yeah. ship, sir. Yeah. Let's yeah, that just to, it just wasn't good enough for me, and I, I always wanted my own you know home place to like do it the way that I was taught, but put it in my own sense of fashion. Well, just so we can make this more than a, a five minute podcast, let's dig yeah. back in just a little bit and, and kind of slow down and. And savor the yeah, savor the moment. So what I, what I find really interesting is most of the guys, um, the first memory that they have of ever doing something to a car was maybe in their driveway or with their pops or like with their own first car. So yeah. so yeah. since <laughs> that was, you skipped yeah. by all that. Yeah, my my listen. My dad gave me a dishwashing detergent and a bucket. That's not a memory. That's, that's a <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, we don't talk, that's not a good memory because that's like, yo, Dad, what the F are we doing to your car, bro? <laughs> okay. Nah, well, nah, well, I go to the things that mattered. So, yeah. Okay. What was, it, what was your very first car? And what was your, was this your very yeah, first so, job? So my very first car was a, uh, let's see. So I would have been, it had been 1996. I turned 16 and I bought a, a 94 two door black Dodge neon. And, um, I did not take care of it the way my dad told me to take care of his Buick. Uh, you know, I, I took it to the laser washes and made sure that it took things that made it clean to make it clean. I didn't know a whole lot back then, but I know that it was clean. Um, but I had to learn. But then once, you know, once I got, you know, a few years older and started getting into detailed jobs where I was actually trained by professionals, that's when I learned like, wow, this, there is a real way to clean your car. And, um, you know, the more you know and the more people you know, you learn that there's a whole lot of ways that is the right way. Yeah. So, okay, so you really did. You dipped your toes into production yeah. detailing, and you're like, yeah. bam. And that's pretty impressive that you stayed there for eight or ten years. That's a pretty long run. Um, yeah. 
out of all of that kind of detailing, so you wore many hats if you're there yeah. for that long. You, if yeah. you're if you're there for eight years and you're a vacuum guy the whole eight years, there's some, oh, we got some kind of problem. Wrong. Yeah. yeah. But um, what, out of all of the things that you learned, what was kind of your favorite favorite part of working in that production kind of detailing? Yeah, I think I think the the production part was was learning how to to build time management. Because obviously everybody's wanting to make money. And the more money you're pumping, the more cars you're pumping out, the more money you're making. But at the same time, the quality was still held at the same standard when that reached your inspectors. And, you know, later on, I became an inspector and then a quality control manager with GM and Chrysler and stuff. But I think time management was the thing. And when I look back at those days, you know, 20 years ago, you know, being able to manage guys now, I think one of the things that I've been able to help them with is time management. So, cause every now and then you get vehicles where you are on a time crunch. You don't want to be, but sometimes you are. Um, but time management was one of the things. And then just learning how to, to find the best ways to put out the best quality uh, in a most efficient way and proficient way was, was one of the things that was best for me at the auto auction. So with that time management, do you, is your shop now, then and now, would it be like you have 15 minutes to vacuum the car and there were like timers that were timing stuff? Yeah. It, did you yeah. do that uh, then and did and did that carry over to what you do now? Yeah. So being that where I came from, you would have people pushing you to be faster, which in a sense, coming from somebody that's OCD like me, which most detailers are, uh, a little bit. You get you get upset when you get pushed because, you know, like, you know, you want to do your best at it. But the one thing I promised myself, obviously opening up a business, um, is that I would never put myself in a position to push myself to put out bad work. And then I promised myself two years ago, if I was big enough to start hiring people, which now we are, um, I would not, I would not put my employees in that position to push out bad quality because of time. And we've been able to just, build an appointment only basis here in Iredell County, Statesville. And uh, it's been wonderful because we can con control our time and our schedule and our guys are comfortable. They're not rushed. They're happy at the end of the day. They walk in with a smile. And I think that's the one thing I learned coming from a production scene is that it really taught me. I hate that it took me so long to build my own business and take that time. But I think it taught me a long time ago, the proper way to handle the business and people that would eventually work for me. Okay. So after your eight or 10 years, we still, it seems like we still have a gap in there. What did you do after that? That <laughs> kind of after that, after that, I went into um, uh, a rental company business uh, where we uh, rented out um, facility services, floor mats and hygiene products. We would, we would fill up, paper towel, tissue dispensers and put floor mats down and help restaurants with aprons and towels. And, and that was my next 10 years. Um, went through a lot of training and the owner brought me in. I was, it was a family owned company and I learned a lot. He sent me to a lot of seminars and training after my college years. And, uh, I learned a lot about building and growing and more about the business side of things. And that was a big part of my life was my thirties and got to see the business side of things other than like production and stuff. But after that, that's when I decided it's time to uh, do my dream. Okay. <laughs> so, and you mentioned that you went to school also. What did you go to school for? Uh, just the uh, associates in business management. So, you know, backgrounds, always management, retail sales, you know, stuff like that. So okay. now yeah. let's talk about that moment in life when all of a sudden something happened there was a moment when you said hey i'm gonna have my own business and i'm going back into the auto detailing world so yeah. tell me about how that came to be so i started a landscape company just because i have entrepreneurship built in me like i always want to own something and build something and it just started there and so one day i was uh, riding up the road and I look up and see this big for lease sign in a big yard. And this, I'm like, oh, let me just pull in there and check it out just for, you know, giggles. And uh, pulled in there. And it was like, as soon as you walk in as a detailer, you're like, holy crap. This is, <laughs> this is a detail shop with a front office, with a brick and mortar look, with a professional look. And I was like, 
I've got to take this chance. And, you know, being where I was at, you know, financially and being able to save up and be able to comfortably put money into starting it, I I just said now's the time because if you don't if you don't take risk in life, you're never gonna know what those chances were that you missed on and you know, one day we're all gonna be laying down and if we didn't take those chances, we're gonna regret it. You got that right, man. <laughs> yeah. So how about from um, your experience in your school, how did that play into your success or like, you know, just things that you kind of knew to do that were from your past education? Yeah. So past education and just the the trainings that I've received, like, and, and the network and just knowing people that were, have done everything I've did, like um, being able to walk in and open the door from a business standpoint, you know, you're the secretary, you're the AP, you're the AR, you're the, the P and L guy. You're, you're looking at ROIs. You're looking at budget. You're looking at payroll. You're, I mean, you're everything. You're like 20 jobs and one guy. And, you know, coming from where I did and being in certain jobs that I did, I was able to see, learn and educate myself in all those jobs. So being able to open my own business, from scratch, it was, it was kind of second nature just to start it because I had that education and it was nothing to me to stay up till two o'clock in the morning and finish paperwork and payroll and calls and emails and stuff like that. So that's just things I've been taught and just, I knew it. Okay. And so uh, you pull the trigger, you get this thing. Um, you, it did something I think that is really, really smart. You kind of picked a, a partner and teamed up with uh, with us as Owner's Pride as a chemical supplier pretty yeah. fast on. What yeah. made you, uh, and a lot of guys um, don't do that, especially when they're new. It takes them a really kind of a few years to, to figure yeah. that out, how beneficial it can be to find the right partner to work with. Yeah. Um, I, I often tell people that really I wouldn't be sitting where I am today had I not found a company and synced up with them and like yeah. became the best with them. So how how did you know to do that? Because that's incredible. So just just the thought of being a business guy, I knew that there's a detail shop in every five miles in Statesville, North Carolina. And I studied them and I seen the difference. And the difference is nothing stood out, you know, if you've seen pictures in the background, they had chemicals from every supplier they had. It's like they didn't know who, what they were good at. And I knew that ceramic coatings were getting big. And I knew that having a partner and a you know type of sponsor and some type of backing, making you look professional was the way to go. And when I opened this place, I knew that professional is what would make me stand out compared to everybody. And I, I don't call them competitors. I wish them the best of luck because we're all here to make money and feed our families. But at the end of the day, when I did my research, owner's pride website, uh, customer service response time, like just everything that a guy like me opening a store up was looking for, uh, owner's pride was right on point. And as soon as I got the callbacks, um, I got, uh, chemical education. I got follow up emails. Like it's like me just inquiring to owner's pride turned into you wanting me more than I needed you type deal. And that's what sold me. And, uh, and it wasn't just the rep that was calling me. It was like, I think I'd be, I had even talked to you two years ago. I'd even got an email from, um, Damon. Several other people. Yeah. 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 Damon. And, um, even just, and even just out of the blue within the first couple of years, like I've had phone calls from Damon, you know, just, you know, talks, thanking me, like, is there anything we can do with change? And that's as a business owner, and family-owned operation, that's beautiful. Absolutely, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so t- let's talk a little bit about your business. Um, coming from a family-owned business and then a larger entity that was doing all of the uh, the recon work, yeah. um, how have you set up your business, New Image Auto Spa, and, and like how many employees do you have and what's the growth been like for that? So from beginning to now, uh, started smartly, slowly and patiently. Um, it started with me and a business partner. Um, we came into this, we started slow and we started with just detailing. And the reason we knew that it just needed to be detailing because it was just two of us and you can only handle so much because 
obviously when somebody opens up, you know, you're probably going to get hammered. And we did get hammered right off the bat because I have a background in advertising and marketing. And when I do it, it usually helps out. And it did. And obviously we got all the people with the very nasty cars. (laughs) And, uh, you know, you learn, you learn like, okay, we need, let's build a new clientele. So then you learn from step one. And then after, after detailing, that's when we, we went four to five months doing that. That's when I got a hold of you guys and y'all just like hammered down and brought us in. Once we brought owner's pride in, uh, we brought in two more employees. Uh, the chemicals made the job easier. The chemicals made the job more efficient. The chemicals made per car cost, like cost per car down profits are up. That was the main thing. That was beautiful. And uh, that made us be able to afford having help so that I could go market and advertise and cold call. And then my other partner doing the other things to bring in the business so we could have these guys working. And um, then we got into the ceramic coatings. Obviously, about a year and a half ago, we started ordering those heavy. And that's just been a game changer here in this county. And um, so now from just me and a partner opening it up, we've been with y'all right at two years. Uh, Now I have... Uh, I've added on 3,000 square foot of, well, we're leasing 3,000 square foot more space than we was. We have close to 4,000 square feet just because business has been crazy. I have four guys with a shop manager running the detail side. We added in full tent services and full ceramic services. And we've been building what we did that was smart for us is I started going to the local, we're heavy in dealerships around here Mm -hmm. in this little small town. So we are now detailing used trade-ins, dealer trade-ins for all the big major dealerships, just five minutes from us. We're preloading tent on every brand new car that gets dropped off every week. Like we're building contracts that are making life changing, you know, financials for us. And it's, it's all about decision making and how much you want to take on. So it went from two guys to there's literally like 10 to 12 guys here every day within two years. And it's been crazy. And it started with you guys. Like, y'all, I mean, it's been crazy. That's how you do a business. That's how, and <laughs> yeah. I like everything that you said. You did it calculated. You took calculated yeah. risks. You split the work yeah. between you and your partner and you, and yeah. you grew the business you had all of that information of how to do the recon work so you took that to keep employees busy and grow your business while you also do the retail high-end work with ceramic coatings sounds like the only thing that you're missing which i'm sure is probably somewhere on the slate to get added in is paint protection film there you go that's it and that's coming uh we've already put it on the big yellow notepad it's on the project list for 2023 2024 so i know who i'll be talking to so yeah, yeah, got, mr matt yeah. gregory we got the, right. we got yeah. the man for that so holy cow yeah. man what a great story so yeah. where 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 do you see this going is this going to be 10 years and then you're selling and getting out and going on to your next venture or do you think this is uh, what we're going to stick with and and where uh, do you so, see yourself scaling this to yeah, so we we have a long road ahead of us, and the the people that I've been fortunate to hire are very close to us, and they feel like family, like they feel like brothers and sisters, and um, I feel like this is something that we will continue. So I think our ultimate goal is is not about the selling part yet. I think our ultimate goal is to you know obviously I'm looking to build the capital to build and purchase my own brick and mortar property. Of course you are. Just only I'm two and a half years in and I'm already kind of tired of paying somebody else to work in a place to make money. So, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, I'm only 42 for, you know, something like that. I've got a couple sons. My business partner's got a son and you know, like my eight year old son, he's, he's homeschooled, but he's one of those kids that he's the shop kid. (laughs) So he's always here and he already knows everybody. And like, we was doing his homework the other night and it asked a question like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he's like, well, duh, I got to run new image when I get older. So, you know, <laughs> he's already got those like little aspirations in him. And uh, it, as a dad, you're like, all right, I got to keep this running as long as I can just to see if that's something he's going to take over. Because we've already made a good splash. And I think with what we have on paper coming forward um, with new new ways of adding new features to cars and being that we're looking to build a one-stop car shop 
with everything you could get later on down the road. I think I think it's something that we could keep going and have not just a business but a legacy. Yeah. And yeah. you know, by doing everything and and setting it up calculated and taking those calculated risks and yeah. the way you've done it, setting it up as a real business. One of the things with yeah. this with the industry that we're in and I, I was literally a person that did this, it's so easy yeah. to get a bucket and some soap aka yeah. how your dad told you to wash the car and then all of a sudden you have a detailing business um yeah but the guys yeah. who are really really successful they do lock on to it like you have and actually grow a real legitimate business and hey i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you a crazy little stat here it won't take but a second but we have a one of the biggest manufacturers are you familiar with the tractor and skid steer company bobcat yes okay so their facility that they produce things are five minutes from my shop within the last year. We now are up there on a first and third shift with your chemicals, cleaning brand new Bobcats that are coming off production line and tractor, all the Bobcats getting ready to be shipped with your detail products, cleaning them so that the dealerships and clients and farmers that get their new products, they're, they're getting clean products. Yeah, so that that's one of the big things we've been able to acquire is like outside sourcing, like weird contracts. I mean, it sounds weird as a, a car detailer, but I have crews on a first and third shift right now uh, cleaning tractors and skid steers and all kinds of heavy equipment, but with y'all's products. That sounds but like something out. I need to come yeah. out there with you and we need to make video content going to the Bobcat factory. Yeah, I mean, it's this, you know, you check out our Facebook, you'll see a layer of post every now and then of us out there just detailing tractors. They even built us our own wash base. So um, it's very fortunate, very blessed. But, you know, with, without Jaws products to be able to help us succeed and do it efficiently, like, I, I really don't think I could just go down to AutoZone and buy some car wash and, and acquire the things that we've acquired. Like the education and stuff y'all brought me has been so beneficial. And just having somebody on the phone all the time when I've had a question, it's, it's been great. Now, and, and not to lift the skirt up all the way and expose everything, but what what's yeah. the kind of stuff that's worked best for you um, with your marketing background as you've kind of taken the lead on that? What kind of yeah. things really seem to resonate the best with you? And is there a difference between what you do for your wholesale marketing for the recon yep. work and the retail stuff. Yeah. So I think what we've noticed is like, we've tried a little bit of everything right now and you know, we've done the, you know, we've put money in Facebook ads and, you know, hit the social media hard. Um, we have a local radio station that reaches 20 plus thousand people uh, every morning. Uh, we signed up for that. Um, they bust out, you know, 10 to 12 ads every 30 minutes about your business. You know, you're paying for it. Um, and you get like a, a once a month um, interview on, you know, on their radio. So we tried a little bit of things. We've done, you know, marketing at car shows. Um, I think the big thing that I've learned is being in the type of town that I'm in is growing with the community and growing with other entrepreneurs, small businesses, not just mm -hmm. details, but but combining yourself with other people that have family owned businesses and, and building a program that where when they're building, they can offset and help you build too. And that's, I've been trying to build with other local small businesses, no matter what they do, car shops, meat markets, everything. And I tell you, that's been one of the most beneficial things I've ever done. And um, here lately we've been able to, generate more business by having a uh, holiday type events, just having people like building foot traffic in my mm. shop. Cause I have a, a front office and a lounge and everything. So like we had Santa Claus here, Halloween, we had a full trick or treat here. I invited other detailers in my shop to build a table. You know, it's don't build enemies grow yeah. together. That's the way I look at it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think it's just about growing in your community, being small business. And that's what I've learned like it doesn't have to be massive. You don't have to really spend a lot of money, but if you do it the right way, people get more compassionate and intimate with you as a person and the things that you say and react and how you take care of on a day-to-day -day basis is it means a lot to our customers and clients. 
Yeah, building community is huge. It, yeah, huge, and huge, that's really huge. Huge. Yeah. it's really big. It's, mm-hmm. it's not just taking money out of somebody's wallet. But you're actually putting exactly. your putting yeah. your arm around them, and they're they're handing you the money. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, a lot of people showed up to our Christmas and Halloween event, and you know, not that they've ever spent any money here, but I treated them like they've spent ten thousand dollars already here. So you know, that'll bring even if that brings them back for one full detail or a tent job or something. You know that you know that's that's the relationship you're looking to build. It's, it's keeping them coming. And the best marketing you can get, and I've learned this a long time ago, is the clients that walk out of your building and after they leave, shaking your hand, because when they leave, they're going to impact more clients with their mouth and now social media. And Absolutely. it's a huge, huge impact. That's the best marketing you can get right now. Absolutely. Word of mouth is always going to be the key. Word of mouth. Because you're getting it from people that you trust already. Exactly. Yeah. So I really love what you said about you're going to try to um, get your own building. That kind of will put you in the top probably 1% or 2% of detail businesses nationwide. Because most guys don't actually own their building. But from a business standpoint, brilliant. Um, maybe it's, it's not so cool right at this moment, but five years right, down the road, yeah. 10 years down the road when inflation goes up and then, you know, you're paying a peanuts as compared to what somebody who would have to rent the same space, right. then you can take that and you can either lease it out or sell it. And you know, yeah. you're building equity. It's brilliant. So yeah. are we going to look for a place and that's an existing building to buy? And if so, what are we thinking? Or is this something that you think maybe you might try to build from the ground up with your own design from the beginning? Our, our goal right now um, is ground up. Um, because the reason I say ground up is because it seems like within the last two and a half years, every six months, we evolve. And our clientele builds and we go from five cars a week in the shop two years ago to 10 cars a week to uh dan right now i've got we're tending close to 200 cars a month wow we're we're coding and there's over there's 50 to 60 cars a month you know getting detailed and tinted and you know when you get to those numbers and you start thinking what we have square footage now like you got to start thinking ahead and i'm not gonna think too far ahead but i'm gonna do it when the time's right but you know, when the time's right, I think ground up with the way that we're evolving and the community is taking us in and responding. And we're starting to get we're starting to get clients an hour to two hours from us. And that that's 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 what makes me feel like I can make this happen is, yeah. you know, the feedback that we're getting. Because if I once I get ready to build up, then I'll know exactly what we were going to need. And I don't have to settle. You know, if I'm looking for something that's already built, then I, I feel like I'm going to settle if I could find the land and build up from the ground up, I feel like we're going to have the perfect spot, you know, for something, you know, I said the word legacy earlier, Mm -hmm. you know, that my son could take over and, you know, maybe so on from there, but you know, who knows, but I know at my age, my only goal right now is to build and keep these guys at work under me work until they retire. That's my goal and give my son an opportunity to walk into something that is, um, very financially stable for him to take over and make his family have the comfort that I've had with my family. And with your production work side, do you have mobile units out there also? Or is that something that you're, you've you kicked know, around? I, I know that's a big thing with detailing right now. Um, but do you know we do not have one mobile unit out there? We uh-huh. don't. Uh-huh. Yeah, we, we, um, we've had requests. But I mean, I don't know if it's just our area, um, but we don't get a lot of requests. Like everybody that calls us is totally cool with dropping off, even if they're an hour or two away. I mean, obviously the ones that are an hour or two away have, have looked us up and they're bringing, they're bringing their cards for ceramic coatings. Mm-hmm. But even locally, they, they brought them in just to drop off. So if you ever want to explore that side, I had a mobile business for 12 and a half yeah. years that I grew and sold. Oh, yeah, I've studied um, <laughs> it's kind of um, Dustin who bought my business actually just yeah. went out and got another mobile rig because he gets the cars to come in for the ceramic coatings. But then the yeah. ultimate luxury is getting your car washed or detailed, yes. uh, maintained every couple of weeks. And then you're really looping the way that you're yeah. doing business. 
I'm, I feel confident that you probably, <laughs> no matter what you put your mind to, yeah. is going to happen. Now, I'm not saying it's not far fetched from it starting, but um, uh, it, as of right now, we we haven't had to worry about it. Uh, but if the time comes and it's something that will boost our business, trust me, it'll be on the yellow pad. <laughs> <laughs> Putting it together, <laughs> making it to the yellow pad. Okay, That's Josh. Here we go. This is my kind of my key question that I ask everybody, and we're going to take this one out. Um, to what is Josh Saunders' definition of success? Definition of success is uh, so success is whatever you make it to be. I'll tell you this: if you wake up every morning and um, you don't find a reason to do what you went to bed thinking about you need to do the next day, you're not succeed, uh, succeeding. Um, it's not about money. It's not about power. Um, I think that success is about uh, happiness, leadership, and making your family, you know, feel good about what you're doing. Cause you know, uh, what I'm doing right now, I don't spend a lot of time at home and, but when my family's happy and proud and knows that they can count on me, that's success to me and that I can walk in and know that they're, they're smiling when I walk in. So, you know, everybody's going to have a different attitude on success, but mm -hmm. you know, if you don't, if you don't wake up and do it and do it better than you did yesterday, you're not succeeding. I like it. I like it a lot. I like you. I like your business. I like your whole darn <laughs> attitude. <laughs> I even like that hair, and I'm a little bit jealous of it. Josh, hey, that's all right. <laughs> thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to share your story on the Owner's Pride podcast. Yeah. And oh, you got my boat, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thank you, oh, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Behind the Buffer, a presentation of the Owner's Pride podcast brought to you by Owner's Pride Car Care Products. Until next time, stay glossy.